Hi, KeyShot 7 from Luxion is officially out. Join me as we discover the new features that have been added to this new installment. So KeyShot has become very very popular, especially when they started integrating with various softwares. If you want to get a copy of the new KeyShot 7, open your browser and go to keyshot.com and you can scroll down to try KeyShot today and that will pop up a new page for you where you can enter your details and hit submit. They're going to send you an email and you follow the instructions that comes with it and other softwares that can be integrated with KeyShot are also listed here from 3D Max to NX to ZBrush. You can get a copy of this and work directly from these softwares and transfer your data from those DCC apps directly to KeyShot for rendering. Once you open KeyShot, the first thing you're going to notice is the UI looks way modern, very minimal, and I think I like it. I really like the, the look of the UI. We can see automatically that we have name attached to the icons here on the, on the big ribbon and if you right click you can either take off the text and go back to the previous version or you can turn it back on and one thing i noticed is they made this new version very customizable you know you can customize this according to how you want to use uh, your key shots it's not so constraining like the previous one so let's look at the ui and when we click down here we're going to see different workspaces that we have this is the default if you're coming from six this is exactly how you 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 most probably know key shots this is the default startup and let me close this and we can switch from that to animation here we can see our camera so once we start moving our camera we get to see how our camera is moving there on the scene and also we can move to advance which gives us a bigger room to do a lot of things as well other things you also notice is if i switch back to the default other things you notice from the top bar here from the top ribbon here is we have an art studio and uh, a cycle studio this has to do with your environment and here for your normal for your studios here for the material templates here to view your geometry and your configurator wizard is more like an advanced presentation mode where you can switch in between materials and also in between different uh model types you have of like let's say the tires or the the glasses or you're also going to notice that there is a big uh change here unlike the previous version of keyshot where you have your model set directly under here now you have your model set here and you have the items that are loaded into your model set you're also going to notice that it went for a minimal gradient kind of ui if you switch through all of them you figure out that they went for something very simple very minimalistic and clean okay so let's get to the fun part and see what they've added here around the materials you will notice that there are actually key materials that they added we will look at these materials and see what and what they actually added in what i'll do first of all is that i'm going to throw in a sphere it's always good to start with a sphere and once i drop a sphere one of the things you would notice if you're coming from keyshot 6 is this pops up by default this doesn't come out in the previous keyshot this pops up and it pops up because it's always annoying when you uh, when you drop it's always annoying when you drop uh say a geometry and you have to go down to the scene and move to the position to start clicking on this but now by default once you click on that this appears and you can set your pivot you can do whatever you want on the fly and yeah that's it so one of the main materials that is really highlighted in this new release is the plastic cloudy or cloudy plastic let's look for it cloudy yeah is this one and this material is supposed to fuse or fill in the gap between you having um a translucent material and a plastic material together you know in instead of having to go get this and you jump into this part of uh, and you jump into your material graph which they actually did a couple of work on instead of going there and start baking this here 
they gave us this and this is quite handy other significant materials you're also going to notice is the, the metal they actually worked on the metals and if you if you scroll down you find out that there is tons of different metals now we have these anodized metals we have these anodized metals that also have been added here and there is also a plastic called the optical plastic which is also added here as well i think the best thing to do is to take your time and go through them and see which of them works for you and still talking about materials one other thing you will notice once you jump into the the material panel is right beside the material graph there is multi-material once you click on multi-material what this is supposed to help you do is you can get different type of materials and test them out especially if you're kind of trying to make a decision of what you want to uh, create maybe you want to see how this material looks on this maybe you want to see how it looks on this and instead of going back and forth you can just have all of them here at once and and look at them and play with the parameters and see how they influence whatever you are creating there is also uh, more like a procedural kind of material that has been added here and it's more towards the wood the wood material now has a procedural side of it so when you click on the wood and click down here you can select procedural and let's pick one and assign this here and look at how it influences what we have okay so we can have this and we can play with how the refraction looks you can play with how the ring of the depth works you can play with the variations as well and the ring noise you can play with the color noise just to get what you're looking for just to get what you're looking for and you would also notice that right underneath the wood there is a new material called the x right and this x right has to do with uh texturing for cars and some other sort of textures that you might be needing when it has to do with presentation and, and in one of the demo which they showed we get to see where they had where, where they were using the x right around with the configurator manager to show off a car and maybe i'll put a link to that video uh in the description below still speaking about the materials and the ui the ui now has uh it now has this scaling function added to it especially if you're using a 4k screen and i am using uh i'm actually not using a 4k screen i'm actually not using a 4k screen but i'm using a uh, sort of a hd screen and a full hd screen and in the previous version of keyshot when i move when i open the app in the hd screen and push it over to the other uh supporting screen which i have which is just a, a normal hd screen what happens is it distorts the way the whole ui looks and i actually get to notice that now once you open this whether regardless of whether i open keyshot in the hd screen or whether i open it in the full hd screen automatically it just scales it just scales to to whatever screen it, it finds itself and that is a huge improvement that is a huge improvement also i still figured out that there is some other improvement that has been added to the textures when it comes to the labels now if you click on the label one of the things which you would also notice is it also has this set of stack which you have here i think keyshot is going towards this i think keyshot is going towards this because it's going to give people or it's going to give the artist more room to uh, make selections of what they want they can make decisions of what they want they can go back and they can say uh maybe this is better than this instead of going back and forth with the with the materials let me quickly pop up one example and show you one of the new features with the materials which i i really really like so i have a screen loaded here i got this screen from the content browser that ships with cinema 4d so let's say i want to select uh, a paint and i click on this paint and i place it here see what happens when i want to place this same paint on something like here if i pick this material and place it somewhere like here 
it asks me this it do ask me this it doesn't happen in the previous one so what it's asking is if i want to link the previous material with this same material because i already have it in use and most times this is a it's a lifesaver so i'm going to say yes and if i try to apply this same material to something else let's say this it's still going to ask me that it's now left for me to say i don't want to see this anymore and always do this each time i try to do that so let me also apply this to the back part of this and you see once i make a change to one of these say i am changing this from black to red automatically it changes to that if i change the color as well it changes to that and yes when you pop this open you get to see that this set of colors is a bit rearranged and it looks pretty nice like this and with the scene open i would also want to show you something that's quite interesting in the new release once i have this open and i move my mouse over any of this say i expand this and i expand this once i move my mouse over this you get to see a preview of what i am supposed to select this is nice if I move my mouse over this, I get to see a preview of what I'm supposed to select. And now I don't need to uh, blindly move around thinking which of these am I supposed to select. The naming convention is okay. It's always good to name your stuff, but this is going to help a lot. It is going to help a lot. Still on the material with the new key shot 7. Um, you can go to the material and add different kinds of labels to your stuff and now you can now add a video to your label it loads the video and you can play the video like you can play back the video here in the viewport and when you render it out you can get uh, a better result and you can load up uh, various different kinds of labels and see how they work and see which of them best suits your situation my only problem with this is if you click and try to load up a video let's uh let's look for one and add it up here what it's going to do is it's going to get this vi it's going to get the video and convert the video into a png or a jpeg sequence and so you see it's going to ask which of the sequence you would want it to convert to what i would really like to have is i would like to see if it is possible for them to just incorporate let's say an mp4 or an mov file that it just plays back directly here.